So I was actually just sitting here and I was reading through some of the comments on today's video. And I don't know when I'm gonna upload this, but I wanted to just share it while it was on my mind and talk about, obviously I realize that not everybody's gonna completely understand or care about my story or our story, I get it. But I also know and realize that a lot of people are going to want to uh, try to make it seem worse than it really is and try and make me feel bad or make us feel bad or hurt our feelings or hurt my feelings. I get it. I, I know. I, I know how this game works. So that's okay. Um, I'm not going to address that most recent comment that I saw that was completely off off base i just blocked the user and i hit him from the channel uh but as i was continuing on through and reading the comments another one came through and it said uh actually i pulled up so i can read it word for word and it says uh time to get real jobs if the migrants don't get them it's going to get worse people way worse and uh sarah replied so youtube full-time isn't a job question mark so uh i'm kind of over the argument of real job i do appreciate it sarah thank you as always but I, I, you know i don't just like listening and hearing myself talk i uh find it very strange and very odd that i have these thoughts and these ideas that come through my head th through my mind and I want to share them with people, you know, I want to share them with the world. So I'm just going to share. And uh, actually, I'm going to share in a different location because I realized that this water might be kind of loud. So I was thinking about this yesterday because prior to this, we were in construction. I was a licensed general contractor. We had a construction company. We did, you know, commercial work. We did government contracts. We did all sorts of stuff. And in that role, I had quit my job and uh, decided to pursue being a business owner and entrepreneur. You know, I quit a really good paying job to go out there and fend for myself, okay? And essentially, in order to make that work we had to go out there and find our own money and this money was not guaranteed even if you found the job getting paid was no guarantee finding the job winning the job winning the bid doing the job um getting the job done successfully and, and on and and on time and in 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 the green there was no guarantee so it was a uh, it was anything but a real job based on what i think the general consensus of a real job is and a real job is when you work for someone and you get paid weekly bi-weekly on a set schedule and you receive a w-2 now i would also be willing to bet that some people may consider uh other forms of income a real job that aren't tied to an employer so to speak for instance okay let's just say a car salesman okay i think people would probably consider a car salesman to be a real job but you're not guaranteed any real income unless you produce and you know that's all going to be based on a variety of factors for which you cannot control so this term real job i get it it's just tossed around, it's thrown around, much like a lot of other terms that a lot of people don't realize what they're saying and they don't know any better. They're just, they're just kind of like parrots repeating what they've heard others say uh, to make themselves feel some type of way. It's fine, I get it, I understand, I don't really care. But for those who understand and care to listen to what I have to share, then let me explain to you how I feel now compared to how I felt a few years ago when I was on, you know, beginning to be on my own. And, you know, we had a business that went from zero to over $5 million a year in revenue um, because of bidding work and building relationships and submitting proposals and uh, 
uh, uh, doing takeoffs and uh, estimates and quotes and all sorts of stuff, right? And so what happens is, is you have seasonality, you know, you have spurts. And unless you have like set clientele, we weren't really in the repair business. I didn't really like repairs, even though repairs was relatively high margin. Uh, I just didn't like repairs. So, you know, having a contract or a retainer or, you know, routine maintenance or, you know, we didn't have those. So we were going project to project to project. And so in between projects, if there's a lull, see, here's the problem. You know, you have no work. That's not a big deal. It was just me for the most part. Then you get some work. Okay. So then you hire employees. Okay. Now you have more burden. Now you have more overhead. And then you get more work. Okay, great. You hire more employees, you buy more trucks, you get more equipment, you take on more overhead. And you're really not making any money yet, okay? So then, here's the big problem. You get more work, you get all this extra stuff to make it happen, and then you don't have enough work, or you have too much work at one time. It's always, it's never gonna be perfect. But when you don't have enough work, then you have all this expense that you think you're probably going to need in the future that you don't want to lose and let go of. So now you're against the clock trying to bid work, trying to push jobs, trying to you know uh, fast track and, and speed up uh, billing, all sorts of things. And so what you do in that moment is you start to see your your cash, you know, your your cash position your line of credit slowly, you know, fading away as you're continuously bidding, 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 you know, and you know, you may not only do bid work, but I'm using bidding as an example because then for us, we would use recording and uploading videos would be uh, an analogy for bidding. So instead of bidding to get work and get jobs uh, to hopefully make some money now, we're, we're making videos and uploading content, hoping to make money. So, um, and now you're waiting to see which one is really going to hit, which one's going to catch, which one are you going to win? Which one's going to provide you with the most in return? And I got to say that at the time, as a business owner, as a licensed general contractor, as a bonded, you know, we had a $5 million uh, bond capacity uh, you know, as a construction company, no one would have told me, go get a real job. But at the same time, I wasn't guaranteed a paycheck. I was, in fact, the last one to ever get a paycheck if there was ever any money left over. But instead, we look at YouTube and it's a, held to a completely different standard by more than likely those who have no idea of what I'm even talking about. And they'll say, go get a real job. Okay, let's just say I had a real job. Let's just say I worked for, uh, let's just say I worked for Bank of America. I worked for, I worked for Google. I worked for, you know, any of these major companies out there that have just recently laid off hundreds if not thousands of people. You're still in the same boat. You're still in the situation of, okay, I've had a disruption to my income. I've had a disruption and interruption in my pay. Now I have to find a solution. Well, I don't think anybody would say, well, now it's time you go get a real job because this isn't actually providing any help, aid or benefit to actually solving the problem. And all it is is somebody coming along and saying, hey, this, this look at Kevin over there. Let's, let's kick him while he's down. Yeah. <sighs> These are the thoughts that, come, that go through my mind uh, as I'm sitting here uh, in, in solitude, you know, just to myself, just thinking. Michelle, she's recording a video. Uh, so I, I left her to her, you know, have full reign of the apartment and the kitchen. But uh, yeah, you know, um, I know, I understand that there's no way that we can realistically share our entire lives with the, those on these short videos. Um, so I also understand when people make these broad and blanket assumptions and statements and comments based on what they think they know or quite possibly just what they hope to be, which is more than likely going to be the worst possible case scenario. 
Um, I get it. I understand. I put myself in this position, much like I put myself in the position to be a business owner, much like I would put myself in the position to be an employee and, you know, uh, vulnerable to whatever company that I work for, which at the time was a very simple and easy concept to grasp and understand because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, why would I choose to leave this job that I've had for almost 10 years that is pretty much a guaranteed paycheck to go and venture into the unknown? And the simple fact of the matter is, is that if it came down to it and that company had to let me go, regardless of any personal feelings or, you know, um, uh, success that I have had and, you know, anything like that, they would because they had to, whether they were forced to, whether it was a bankruptcy, whether they were bought out, whether anything possibly they say, Kevin, you were the last one in. So you're the first one out uh, or, you know we don't want to offer you a pay cut so we're just going to give you a severance and tell you to you know because you know who's going to work as hard when they get a pay cut you know working for a company it's just not it doesn't make sense so it's like you could lose that job too at any time at any point in time right so really the key is to have as i've said before multiple sources a backup uh, you know a plan b a strategy a safety net and uh, keep your expenses as low as you possibly can. Make as much as you can, spend as little as possible, budget, uh, eliminate debt, save and invest, which we are, you know, we're, we're actively doing this, but it still doesn't, it doesn't take away or negate or even present the opportunity for us to ignore what's happening right now, okay? And what's happening right now is far bigger than anything I could ever truly express in a video. But I promise you guys, I will continue to try. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.